Welcome, my friends. Happy six line day. Happy left angle cross of limitation. There is a limitation to all of us. We all die. And the gate 42 is the gate of death or wrapping up a cycle of experience. One of the interesting things about this channel, which is the channel of maturation, and it's a design of balanced and cyclical development. One of the interesting things Ross said is that he did thousands of readings and over his life, he found many, many, many of these people who had these channels were midwives as far as the 5342, the channel of maturation, which as you can see is not in the transit today. We're just going to focus mostly on gate 42 today, but just to welcome in the energy of the sun, we're going to speak to where that energy is being grounded in the earth as well. So the sun in its transiting life force expression that all of us are uh, either amplifying or feeling the influence of today in this hexagram 42 increase, the gate of growth, we have the sixth line that is talking about nurturing. Now, if you have the moon in this channel or in this with this gate and line, the moon will exalt the expression of this nurturing. So the Ravi Ching reads a natural and instinctive nurturing of others, the power to share the process of growth with others. And if you have Saturn, it will detriment this line, a restrictive and malefic materialism that is self alienating and encourages aggression. In other words, the refusal to share the benefits of growth with others. Now, growth is something that must be limited. Think about cancer. <laughs> Think about, you know, if you kept growing and how gigantic you would be. You know, there is always this process of cyclical. I like to think of it as an evolutionary spiral when it comes to finishing off or closing out cycles of experience. The 42 is about getting out of the experience. And oftentimes what happens with 42s is that they enter into something that maybe took a lot of entry energy to get into and they can't get out of it or they can't let go of it. They can't throw it away. They can't mm, finish if they have not entered into a cycle of experience correctly. And left angle crosses of limitation are really important. They're standing in that doorway, kind of like um, a closing of the door, the process of completion, of finishing off a cycle of experience. And the six lines are standing there as role models or examples of the wisdom that comes in the gate of growth. This is about nurturing the completion of cycles of experience. So as the sun moves through the wheel, you'll notice that, you know, there's a particular pattern, there's a particular cycle of experience that people go through. And this is why I'm calling this the wisdom of limitation, because in our cycle of life, the gate 42 is a power gate. It's a wealth gate. In fact, all of those sacral gates are power and wealth gates. But this particularly has an ability to help guide people into, when it's in an undefined center like mine is, guide people into recognizing whether or not they're using their energy correctly and whether or not that process that they're a part of is going to bring growth. It's going to bring a finishing off or a completion of the end of a cycle. So there needs to be a limit. There needs to be an end. And these 42s are the people who can bring things to that close. Now, if you've got a sacral center that is defined in your body graph, the 42 is where we have the quarter of the wheel, which is about initiation and purpose fulfilled through mind's process. So in the completion of the cycle of experience, when somebody is a defined sacral generator, 
their energy resource is going to respond because all of those gates that are attached to that sacral, if they have a gate 42, particularly the response is the energy that can bring things to a finish. So the sacral voice has a response which reflects the energy toward or away from the involvement in an activity or a process, a cycle of experience. Now this is very abstract in the nature of what this gate is about, meaning it's experiential, it's sensing, and it's about coming to a close. We're almost at the end of the close of the quarter of the wheel that is about the initiation of the mind into the world of form. So when it comes to this mind's process and these people who are about growth, all of them are learning or expressing, broadcasting the expansion of the resources which maximizes the development of full potential. The expansion of resources in order to maximize full potential. So now where this energy today is being grounded is in the gate of duration. Hexagram 32 is called the gate of continuity. And the sixth line is about tranquility or learning the need to calmly face impermanence because nothing in this world endures. Everything, everything dies. Everything comes to a close. And Pluto exalts this line, an underlying acceptance of change that may or may not lead to tranquility. The instinctive awareness to accept change and transformation is the exalted, exalted expression of that gate 32 line of tranquility. Now, Neptune, if you have this here, impermanence, it detriments impermanence as a proof of meaninglessness with its attendant manifestations, depression, delusion, and in the extreme, self-destruction. In other words, the fear engendered when change is experienced as impermanence and the potential for depression. That is the limitation, 70% of the energy neutrino stream that we are being bombarded with right now that is being grounded into the earth is experiencing this six line quality. And what is the six line about? The six line is about what's next. What's next? It's not the unseen, the first line. It's not the seen, the second line. It's not what we happen to bang into by chance, the third line. It's not about looking for influence or friendship. And it's not about connecting with strangers. The sixth line is moving beyond, it's looking down the line of circuitry. So what this circuitry is about, remember the human experiential way, because it's abstract, because it's sensing, because it is about felt feeling, feelings, into the experience itself. Ultimately, what all human beings are looking for, they're looking for progress and experience in the life that leads one to a feeling because we're all driven by the experience of wanting pleasure in the life and we all want to avoid pain. And so you can hear in these cycles, we have these ups and downs. We have these experiences of movement towards and the sixth line where it's moving towards is it's moving towards that next, not only in the circuitry down the line. So sharing growth, experiential growth and progress, but it's looking to the next gate in the wheel, the mandala wheel. And that is gate three ordering ordering, which is a process of synthesis, something very different, something that moves beyond. So now in our process of understanding more about this mind, mind's duality, I believe that this is where we have Janus, isn't that correct? In the gate of growth, as far as its Godhead, archetypal Godhead, we're talking about the sacral response and the power that it has to sense, to feel, to grow 
into that experience. So in our process, I'm just going to highlight the rest of the Ray of I Ching here. We have come from diversification in the first line, growth through expansion, or too much expansion, leading to decadence. The second line, that was what was unseen. The second line, which is what we're unaware of, and yet the natural expression of growth is identification, or the power of growth through participating in trends. And sometimes growth, which stops in reaction to trends or change. And then we have, by chance, trial and error, happenstance, circumstance. In times of increase, we learn that mistakes are a natural part of the process. The power to accept mistakes is a part of growth. And mistakes will give power to moodiness and caution. But the third line way is our way of finding growth through experience in times of increase. Then we reach the fourth line, the middleman, the maturity to bring growth through mediation. Or on the other side, a lack of maturity where the power to harmonize distorts mediation and limits growth. Then we have the fifth line of actuali self-actualization. Growth that is self-fulfilling and naturally leads to influence. And on the other side, inner growth that empowers reclusiveness. Anybody fifth line that likes to be reclusive? Hi, that's me. And then the sixth line, again, nurturing. The power to share the process of growth with others. Or the refusal to share the benefit of growth with others. So this is about, remember, balanced development in response, maximizing the potential of beginnings through expansion, expansion, bringing things to a close so that the next step can be taken and completing the cycles of experience is the heart and soul of growth when it comes to our growth process as human beings, one step at a time. One step at a time because all sacral channels that are not directly connected to the throat need a step-by-step -step process. This is abstract, so this is about immersing oneself completely and wholly into the experience, committing to the process of the felt sense as one experiences the adventure and the journey not trying to get to a destination necessarily, but feeling things deeply along the way, experiencing the full potential of what it means to be here in this moment. You taking, you are taking the patterns of life and exper experiencing what it's like when fate steps in, throws a monkey wrench in your plans, and all hell breaks loose because of this or that that might have gone wrong. So we have this process of the development of growth in human beings that requires a stop, a finish, an end. An end, a getting off the wheel, off the cycle. But first we have to enter back into the wheel through our mind's process, the initiation, into the world of form. And this is where the 42 stands. Standing between the gate of shock Boy, is it a shock to be reincarnated, isn't it? To come back into this life and to get reincarnated into a little baby form and not remembering necessarily my daughter when she was five. Mommy, do you remember when I was your mommy? And I looked at her and I could feel the truth ringing in that, that she had a familiarity that even when I was, for me personally, I have an IVF baby, in vitro fertilization with ICSI, to be very precise. And I was waiting in that room alone after they had injected me with my fertilized eggs. Test tube baby, in other words. And I could feel the presence or the clarity, the connection, right in those moments where they had left me alone to rest. And when it became time to take that test, I already knew that I was pregnant, that I was here to nurture, 
my child. What's interesting, <laughs> emotional, <laughs> what's interesting uh, as a connection, personally for me, I'm a personal perspective person, so that's what you get when you hear me feel like I'm inspired to share something. What's interesting about the dynamics here between my both of my south nodes is that they're both talking about nurturing or nourishment. The 27 is nourishment, the gate of caring. That's my unconscious south node. And the 42 in the sixth line is nurturing in this gate of growth. So being able to facilitate cycles of experience that we go on these adventures you know, one of the th my earliest jobs as a scuba dive master was taking little groups of people, up to six, on adventures underwater for new experiences and pointing out the little tiny things, the little details along the way as I found this process of bringing them on this adventure and in this journey and nurturing them through that care and compassion for what it's like to be maybe a completely new scuba diver and now I'm doing the same thing, completely new to human design, completely new to being an analyst or a guide, doing the same thing, bringing people through a cycle of growth. And one of the things that was really interesting to me when I first started learning all of this, I only came across one training from Ra where he had the it's right over here. The environment, the storylines. And in that storyline teaching, what we did at the BG5 Business Institute is we pulled all those storylines out into a PDF and started teaching the nodes according to how Ra described it. And so I'm going to read to you what the South Node Gate 42 to North Node Gate 32 notes are which is full of uncertainties, threats, and risks, a deep process of abstract and the sacral, where the not-self can end up using massive amounts of energy to enter into a process, thinking that growth is going to be the result, only to discover that it's a retrogressive process. And how important it is that the, you have this as your unconscious storyline to make the decision to enter into the right experiences that are fulfilling, satisfying, and going to bring the right development into your life. And what happens when people are not in alignment, chasing after things that maybe aren't going to be necessarily helpful to their growth process if they've got a 42 and an undefined center really hard for them to get out of that experience especially if you're a non-motor projector hard to get out of that experience now recently i went through my first three classes in my first cycle of level one analyst students recently, one of my students came to me and said, hey, Lavina, did you know that Ra had this recording where he taught about all of the 32 personality nodal environments from the conscious perspective? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. That's really cool. So what we did is we transcribed it, our little team transcribed it, and now we have a resource that I have yet to go through, but I just wanted to read one piece with you. And that is the notes that we put together on the 4232. Now from the conscious personality side, this is my nodal environment. So I have a very special connection and that's why I chose this day, this line to reveal or read this part. Now the 42nd gate as Ra describes, is that end in the beginning, middle, and end of the cycle of experience. So it is this ability through the nodes to be able to see that everything has an end. And it's also seeing how difficult it is for those that you're looking at to be able to finish things, to get out of things. And one of the gifts of the 42nd gate when it looks out into the world is, is that it's looking out at the capacity of humans to finish what they start. Can they finish what they start? 
So you're looking at out at the world, at the vitality, the life force, the energy system of that world, the generator world around you. And you're looking at and perceptive of who has the energy to take things to completion, to a finish. So you can always see who's not doing their thing. You can always see where they are in that process because you're instinctively aware when they're not giving all of their energy to something on the other side there. So when you're like me, and you're looking out through these 42 eyes that I have in the six line nurturance and to be able to have my personal perspective on it, when you're looking out at the world, I, when I look out at the world, there's this vitality and life force that is available or not. And so seeing how and who and why and when, all of these things, the personal perspective that I have to be able to learn about what it takes, how much time it takes to finish things. Not so much whether they have um, things that can really come to a completion because of what they're saying, but that you're tapped into feeling the life force energy and whether there's an availability or not. I can hear when my daughter, she doesn't have a 42, but she's a very highly defined manifesting generator with emotional authority, three sacral channels, two emotional channels, very powerful energy. When she says something and she's paying lip service without asking the question, I can feel it in my body when she doesn't have the juice for it. But just to be sure, I might restate. So what I hear you're saying, or what I hear you want to do, is that right? Or do you have energy for that? And because she's a split definition, it's much better to do things together with her, sit down and do the homework together rather than, you know, asking her to get anything done independently. Because all of us have an ability to assimilate or process what's going on with the other. If in right timing, it's correct for us to interact. There is this congruency and this compatibility when the energy is aligned to have beautiful, pure, clean conversations. When it's not coming from the not self mind state, and it's coming from this natural availability to guide, if I'm a projector, as I am, or to respond, as my daughter is a generator. One of the things that I noticed I would like to draw everybody's attention to when it comes to what we are experiencing in the transits, this gate 60, line 3, it's a real heavy hitter. And next week, the sun is going to be in gate three. So we are going to be experiencing a deep and profound mutative shift, potentially. It's right for you to take advantage of it or not. You might feel very heavy next week. And if we go look at the line value of what this Pluto is doing, Pluto in the gate of limitation, the gate of acceptance, the energy to maintain identity and security despite limitations or energy which ignores limitations and pays the price. Energy which ignores limitations and pays the price. Now, personally for me, I have gate three as my Chiron asteroid, planetary asteroid. So it doesn't create a channel, but I can feel this deep, profound shift inside. And every time that channel come in, boy, comes in, which it is next week, all week. Boy, is that a heavy pressure. I mean, you're all, all going to feel it differently. But it's just something to be aware of with regards to, are you feeling moody, melancholic? Are you feeling sad, depressed? And oh, Alex, thank you for letting me know. The voice changed over the years. Alex is um, moderating on Clubhouse, and she's been one of my fellow students in professional analyst training. And also, um, I've had the benefit of having her be a fan of my work. So she's also been one of my students as well over the years. And 
the voice completely changed the tone the pace yeah she's recognizing the tone too really changed and you know when you get out from under that stress of trying to prove yourself trying to appear to be smart trying to get it all done trying to answer everybody else's questions trying to this that and the other thing and you just allow yourself to let it all hang out and be yourself it's such a freeing experience and being myself you know i still have certain things that are to my taste and certain things that i won't do because you know the power skills oh you're welcome you know innate dignity is my unconscious core essence and finding your own dignity your own way means being empowered so the person who shows up as disempowered you can feel it in their voice when they're disempowered i remember when i first started being in classes as a living or design student i could not speak without this huge lump in my throat could not because of all of this emotionality and all this chaos that lived in the body and at some point in the deconditioning process you let enough of that go and in hawaii i'm from hawaii we call it hang loose hang loose bra just let it out let it go relax kick back and that's the coolest thing about being on this journey is that there's not that forcefulness or that heaviness and that weight of all of the not self strategies that the mind convinces you to try and you know do something about and ooh i'm looking at my my chart right now and i've got a lot of individuality <laughs> thanks to the transit so yeah i can feel that it's time to put a pause in our conversation uh alex is saying i have three individual ch channels so acoustic is very important for me yeah yeah us us acoustic people us freaks <laughs> geeks weirdos we stick together us weirdos you know <laughs> human design is a very um out there system although it's getting some traction in the you know more popular world now but human design definitely is very very different as a path and a journey to awakening so i honor each of you for your presence and availability to commune with me if only to chat at me and to just be there on the other side to speak to the last piece uh, 42 you know it's it's impersonal sharing because abstract circuitry is very impersonal. It's just this genetic need to share. And as this is part of the way that I see just the communication of me, I honor you for your availability to be present and available to witness and watch as we journey through this time and space together. My fractal family, thank you so much. Namaste.